So here's our system, right? Highly programmable. Uh, we have a high performance recirc, which means we can take a packet through the chip and bring it around again. We do that a lot for tunneling. Gives us a chance to see in and out. Um, the fact that we can scale that so you really don't see a uh, user level impact makes it very cool. So we're at 1.3 billion. That was our original chip. Actually, this is still free. Um, feature lookup pipeline, Dave's talked about that. We have advanced on-chip clause. So I'm not going to get into that today, but I think Tim Zagetti is going to talk a bit about that later on. And so what we have is we have all the ingredients to build a great foundation. So here's the latest chip. So this is Doppler D. This is UADP 2.0, using external code names. This is what's driving the Cat 9K. But this is a straight evolution of what we're currently selling today in the 3850. So new features we're rolling out now, like the SD access, is getting rolled out on the first 3850 that we sold people and I think FCS was February 2013. So the promise we made people that we'll build you a network that will evolve with your business, we kept that promise. All right, let's get going. Flexible pro program pipeline, I think Dave talked to you through this already. Parser, L2, L3, L3 actions, policy actions. Now we can actually reorganize this. This happens to the order it's in right now. If we have to change it, we'll change it. Um, modification, scheduling, um, flex parser. So this is all now flexible. In your stages, the stage count changed. Stages will go up and down depending on the level of platform we're building. In UADP 2.0, the big one, we've actually added a couple more stages. We might later on make different chips with less stages. Flexible rewrite, flexible counters. Um, the key thing is, is everything is going through. Dave, this is a nice animation here. So we've got the IPv4 packet going through. You know, we've got the IPv6 packet going through, which we obviously supported day one. We then basically put MPLS on the system a little while ago. Uh, because we'd already done the move to iOS XE, it was, it was easy for us to pick up the control plane code. And then I think it only it took us internally a couple of months of development to actually put MPLS on the system. Yep. Does every packet go through every stage yes. every time? So this stage is a fixed delay pipeline. Right? So basically packets come in, number of packets in flight, I think a couple of hundred. Each one of these stages actually has multiple packets because it does some work on a packet, launches a lookup, waits for the result. So the entire thing is a fixed delay pipeline. Right? Basically one packet every four clocks. Gotcha. And the clock rate for the original chips was 375 megahertz. This guy can either run at 500 or at 625. Okay. Um, so that's uh, MPLS wandering through. Uh, VXLAN is the thing we added recently. VXLAN's actually been shipping in hardware for a while because we put it out initially as what we call campus fabric. So that's the underpinnings of SDA. Um, GRE's on. We ro rolled GRE in sometime. GRE was actually interesting. We actually had it almost done, and then it got pulled out of release. But actually, someone left the CLI in. So we figured it out later, and we took it out properly. And then we found out someone was actually had it deployed in the field. So, it's like, <laughs> so I actually had to have a conversation with someone to explain why his new system didn't work anymore, because we pulled the feature out. Um, and the point we make is, if they invented V7, which I hope they don't, we can probably handle it. So this gives you the ability to evolve infrastructure to match business needs. Okay, I've got to get going. Um, the Xlane is a protocol not invented when we started. I started working on this program mid-2006. We did the basic groundwork for the ASIC stuff, you know, 2006, 7, and 8. The Xlane wasn't invented a long time ago, but we're shipping it in hardware. So, in hardware, high rates delivered as a core underpinnings of SD access. Okay, processing pipeline, I talked about tunneling. What we do basically is we take the packet through, add the header, put VXLAN on the front, I then take it back to the front. So basically, my first lookup result basically says this is going to a, to a um, exit point, an XTR. Then I basically put the header on the front, then I forward it normally. So I get to run all the same forwarding features you'd expect. Uh, functionality, microcode pipeline, um, 240 stacking interface, that's what we had in the original UADP. If you actually go and look at what's on the 9400, this guy, when it's running on board, actually runs up to 720 gig. Now, this is uh, engineering math, marketing math doubles for spatial reuse. So if you look at it, the 9400 is non-blocking, so it's uh, basically 1.4 terabit effective backplane. Um, On-chip micro-engines, fragmentation, uh, reassembly, encryption, and decryption. Uh, we also have the ability, for instance, when we're doing ER span to truncate, so you just get the front of the packet. That becomes very interesting for doing analysis of packet flows. I can also basically take a full packet, put it into ER span, and then fragment it so you can get it across the network. So we're seeing that being an increasing use case for doing observability in the network. Um, On-chip NetFlow, we talked about that. Lots of terabytes. Actually, I think Mel said he did the math. I think on, on UADP 2.0, I think he's up to 16 terabits a second. Was it 16 or was it more? Might have been, uh, 
16,000 terabits a second? Yeah, a lot. All right, programmable family. Our original, um, 1.0. So this was the thing that I sweated, uh, sweated tears on. We launched in, uh, Febru in February 13 in London. As I said, we rolled it out, optimized around 1 in 10 gig Ethernet. Per 24 ports, you got 24K net flow, 240 gig stack, and 56 gig bandwidth. So we then rolled it in. So this is what we're calling 1.1. We added in 40 gig. It's a dual core system. It's two in a box. We added in 1588. We added in, it's up to 160 gig. And then we go to the, to the newer, new guy. So basically, this is twice the scale. And it's mainly twice the scale to deal with the complexity of the 9500 and the 9400. And so basically, we now have a two core system, but shared lookups, which means I can have one table in one core and a different table in another core, so I can scale better. Up to 64K by two. Again, I've got two blocks, so it's up to 128K records. You know, two to four extra table sizes and up to 240 gigi. And that's 240 gigi packets per second, any packet size. Make sense? All right, look at another way. Dave, Dave loves numbers. So I, they used to ask me how many transistors, and I said like a lot, but they laughed at me, so we eventually got the number. So at 1.3 billion transistors, you get one, one per person in, in India. At 3 billion, you get one for India, China, the US, and Canada. At 7 billion, we get one each. <laughs> so, and the transistors is how we build the foundation. So Tim Zagetti has a quote from me somewhere that basically says, if you think about ASICs, right, if you want to get to the bottom level, there is no bottom. But what you have to do is you have to build a foundation to build everything else on top of it. So my, my work is basically to build the building foundation. Then you build the network on top of that. If the building foundation is solid, then the, the building can change and adapt, adapt to what you need. Make sense? All right, lots of use cases. All of this stuff we've basically released. VXLAN GP and NSH will come, we think, but maybe they won't, right? If they take off, we'll add them. It may be, it may be a different header we need in a couple of years. I don't know. But we built, this, we built this system to be adaptable because we know technology is going to change faster than your infrastructure. Uh, basically, showed up in the 3650, 3850, and 40, CAT 4500. We're now basically we've evolved the architecture. Um, so we can actually run the same image on all these, these guys, we, but the microcode is just a small evolution in the 93, 94, and 95. Okay, so you guys should go and see them. We're actually very proud of these switches. We actually have them designed nicely. So we actually pay, we work with Pina, Pina Farina, who's the guys who helped design Ferraris, because we actually wanted to work nicely. So a lot of work got done in the industrial design to try and make sure that the switches were consumable. OK, I'm quickly going to talk about wireless for a second. And you go, hang on a second, why is the switching guy talking wireless? And some of you may well know, I did actually speak at Mobility Field Day a while ago, because I was talking about how M-based and M-gig support wireless. But the point we're trying to make here is we innovate in silicon all through the campus. And so I'm briefly going to touch about why the, why the wireless stuff becomes interesting. So here's a nice picture of an AP. So a traditional AP you're going to see has probably got a, you know, a 2.4 gig radio and a 5 gig radio. You know, that would be pretty common, right? Now, if you know much about wireless, which I know a little bit about, what you know is you actually want much higher density in 5 gig than 2.4. And you actually want to move everyone you can onto 5. But there's still devices out there that run 2.4, so it becomes an interesting problem for wireless. So what about if you make these guys flexible and programmable? So the interesting thing about this one is it gives you the ability to basically do a survey of where you are dynamically and spin up the right radios and channels. So I can see the population that's out there. If I've got a whole bunch of 5 gig devices in that corner, I'll just run 5 gig over there. And maybe I'll have 2.4 gig over the one side where my old stuff is sitting. So you have the ability to optimize the radio infrastructure about the occupancy of the room. So we've got a whole lot. We've got clean air. We've got the uh, frequency selection. Again, so you, have to, you also have to make sure you don't interfere with, it, with traffic control and other stuff, right? That gets interesting, particularly in Europe. Optimized roaming, client link, expandability of the module, ABC, more performance, and MGIG uplinks, of course. Because we believe, and you can argue whether it's this year or next year or the year after, your access points are going to go over a gig. You know, I think there's first going to show up in places where you have high density. So maybe if you're in a, a lecture hall or a concert theatre, maybe if you're at Stanford where they actually, some of the uh, lecturers, they push video as soon as the lecture finishes and everyone grabs it as they walk out. So I think you've got 100 people in a room all wanting to grab the video now. So radio roll flexibility, again, you want to have the system dynamically change to match the radio environment. Make sense? And the radio environment is the buildings, it's the interference, it's all the people that are there and the things. OK, 
Okay, so dual band flexibility, you guys know if we basically, if everyone is a long way away, so let's, let's say you've got one guy who's sitting out there who's on at basically 12 megabits a second, and the guy who wants to be close, 300 megabits a second is just sort of stuffed. So as you know, in wireless, you actually schedule in time. So when I'm sending you traffic, I send you some time. So if you're on 12 megabits a second, you slow down everyone else. But if I can run this as a mac macro micro, I can run two cells. So I can run the five gigahertz cell close and another one for further away. That way I can effectively group the, I can group the devices by their capacity. So the, uh, the macro and micro thing is going to be really interesting as we roll it out and see how this helps. All right, so you get better channel utilization. So again, this is probably a subject that we should get mobility field day guys talking a bit more about, about how this innovation actually affects your business. So this is the sort of place we think this is going to work, and this is the sort of bandwidth we think you'll get.